We're so impressed with the activities that you guys have been doing to help provide food and shelter to the native beasties in your backyard. There's one more thing that you can do to protect native wildlife in your garden. Trap for introduced predators. In today's episode of Backyard Biodiversity, we're going to show you how to become expert pest detectives and how to trap like a pro. If you've got furry four-legged creatures in your backyard, not only are they introduced, but they are the biggest threat to all the native backyard biodiversity we've been talking about. The main culprits in your garden are rats, mice, possums and hedgehogs. Today we'll be focusing mainly on those pesky rodents, rats and mice. They create a lot of trouble in your backyard, wrecking havoc by eating pretty much everything. Seeds, fruits, seedlings, wetter, insects, eggs, chicks, you name it, they eat it. Like me. Before you start trapping in your backyard, you've got to work out what predators you've got and where they're hanging out. This requires you to become a pest detective. Poos provide clues and I've noticed these tiny poos in one of my bug hotels. They look a bit like small mouse droppings. On closer inspection it turns out they're wetter droppings. Phew! They've got blunt ends and also they've got ridges down the side that makes them look stripy. To find out who's been pooping in your backyard check out the Pest Detectives website. Footprints can also be used to identify shy backyard critters. A top tool in the pest detective's toolkit is a tracking tunnel, like the one we saw in our lizard video. Here's how you can make your very own tracking tunnel. This is what you'll need. The timber is going to be the floor of our tunnel. Use the core flute to make the walls and roof by putting the timber in the middle of your core flute and bending the sides up with the grain. Trim the edge down to make sure the sides are the same length. Use a gun stapler to staple the edges of the core flute to the side of the timber. That's your structure done. For the bait tray, cut out the bottom of the milk bottle at the line and then cut out two wings from the sides of the milk bottle. Use tape or a hot glue gun to pin them to the bottom of the bait tray. Use blue tack to pin down the two pieces of card paper on the wings of your tray. Cut your sponge to fit inside the tray and fill your tray up with food coloring and water in a 1 is to 3 ratio. Now put a dollop of peanut butter on the sponge as bait. Slide the tray into the tunnel and press down. Your tunnel is now ready for use. In order to work out where to put your tracking tunnel you've got to think like a predator. Places that provide food and shelter to predators are all good spots, including next to your compost, by your wood pile, or next to your rubbish and recycling. Rats and mice like to run along walls and fence lines, so putting your tracking tunnel slap bang in the middle of your lawn is not a good spot. There are other tools that you can use to detect predators, including chew cards and wax tags. If you'd like to find out more, we'll provide you with the links to the relevant resources. Now that you know what predator you've got in your backyard, it's time to get trapping. Look at all the clues to figure out what kind of trap you need for what kind of predator. Towards Predator Free Taranaki gives out subsidized rat trap packs through schools, Mitre 10, hunting and fishing, and other suppliers. If you need some advice or help on other kinds of traps you can use, you can give the Taranaki Regional Council a call. This is a trap box, and this is a T-Rex trap. Now when you're trapping, it's absolutely essential 
that you always wear gloves and that you wash your hands thoroughly with soap afterwards because predators like rats carry nasty diseases. Now if you're not careful, these traps can inflict quite a bit of damage. So it's really important to always have an adult who's supervising and also a big dollop of common sense. Now to set the trap, what you do is first of all get some law. We'll be using peanut butter. Keep your fingers well out of the danger zone. Put some peanut butter in it. Set the trap and then place the trap towards the back of the trap box. Towards the back. Now place your trap in a place that mice and rats will love and then check your trap every few days. Invertebrates and mice can also enter your trap and eat up your bait without setting it off. And everyone knows a trap without bait is pretty much useless. Sometimes your bait can also go really moldy which keeps the predators away. So it's probably worth it to change out the bait every week by putting some fresh peanut butter or Nutella and taking out the moldy bait. Good news, we caught a mouse. Mice are sometimes too light to set off the T-Rex traps, so if you know you've got a few of them around, it's also worth getting some of these mice traps. What we're going to do now is treat this little fellow with respect, bury him in the ground where he can provide nutrients for other plants. R.I.P. little fella. Record your catches on the Trap NZ website or app. We'll provide instructions how to do this. Recording your traps and catches on this national database helps projects like Towards Predator Free Taranaki work out where trapping efforts are sufficient and where there are gaps that need filling across the region. Look at how much trapping's happening already. Getting involved in a community trapping group is a great way to stay motivated, make friends and work as a team. There's lots of awesome trapping groups across Tamanaki. If everyone trapped in their backyard, we'd each become a piece of the giant jigsaw puzzle to create that complete predator-free picture in our region. And this would really make a big difference to protecting our native wildlife. Kia ora, my name is Tama Blackburn. Kia ora, my name is Ipio Blackburn. And we are from Waitara Taiao Community Group doing trapping in our community. Uh, when we started trapping, we only had one trap in our backyard next to our chicken coop. And now in Waitara we have 200 traps. We're here to talk to you about backyard trapping. We've got one trap that's just over there at the chicken coop. And we've got another trap that's down the creek a little bit. There's maggots! If you're thinking about doing trapping in your backyard and in your community, you definitely should, eh? Yeah. It's fun, eh, bro? Yes. Yep. Today, we'd like you to become a backyard pest detective. Make your own tracking tunnels and look for poo clues and post us photos of what you find. Together, we can make a real difference when it comes to protecting our native wildlife.